Uh, I want to start off by saying Brakatha Yahawa, Brakatha Yaharashai, Brakatha Yahawa, Brakatha Yaharashai, Kohala Yahawa by Shimmy or Shai, Kohala Yahawa by Shimmy or Shai by Shimmy Kakadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles at Great Millson that told me this doctrine in truth and sincerity. Shalom to the elect. The Heavenly Father's name is Yahawa, which means he is or he exists. Ba'ashim in the name of his only begotten son, who the world only calls Jesus Christ. We know his name to be Yaharashai, which means uh, the, the Savior, the Deliverer, for the pedigree of your father. Right? Ba'ashim in the name of the Rokha Kadash, which means the Holy Spirit, the living waters that flow through the hopeful elect. Yahweh Ba'ashim Yaharashai, Ba'ashim Kakadash, that's in the ancient Hebrew. Right, we've been discontinued from our heritage because we went off falling after false gods and false idols. Now, now rehearsing the righteous acts that were given to us by our forefathers, not following the law, statutes, and commandments that was given to us by our forefathers. But in the latter days, through Yahweh Shai HaMashiach being our, our Lord and Savior, right, he's able, uh, he was able to uh, wake us up by being that what that perfect lamb. So we're able to get this word that's able to. Um, you know, give us comfort in the latter days to be able to know that we are the Hebrew Israelites, right? If you so-called Negro, so-called Latino, so-called Native American, or other speckled bird looking like the other nations, and your spirit bear witness with this doctrine, you could be one of the elect. Waking up, you know, the people around the four corners of the earth, the Israelites, and, um, you know, letting us know who our adversary is, which is uh, Esau Edom. Esau means wasted away he is, and they are the Edomites, the modern-day Assyrian, the modern-day uh, Chaldean, the modern-day Egyptian. They are the wicked that it speaks about in the scriptures. And biblically, they are, they are the Edomites, but they call themselves the so-called white man, right? They are the elite, the banksters, the ones that have the fatness of the earth, which is the best places, and they have to what live by their sword. That's why you see in over um, you know, 80 countries, you see 750 um, military embassies. And what do they do with these embassies? They come through these different nations. And they, um, you know, take over, um, you know, all their customs and bring in their own customs, which is a democracy to bring in wickedness, you know, to put the uh, man on man, woman on woman, you know, put the woman above the man, you know, and have a straight division. And anybody that doesn't, um, you know, comply to their, um, you know, the rules or their, their, their um, expectations, it's a get down or lay down mentality. Basically, they'll just take you out. They'll either buy you out or take you out. But in the latter days, there, Esau Edom is being exposed for, um, you know, the wicked that he is. You know, these uh, other heathen nations, they're starting to build up their uh, missile defense systems and their technology to say that, you know, they are strong. So now we're, um, you know, in Matthew 24, where it speaks about, you know, what are the signs in the times? And Yaharashai told them, you know, this would be wars and rumors of wars, you know, uh, a famine. You know, earthquakes and, and um, diverse places. And these are all the things that are going on right now. That's how we know what time we're, time we're in. Right? And, um, you know, also uh, Esau Edom is, a, is in rule. And when you look at, uh, is that 2 Ezra 6? It speaks about the time. And I'll just read it. 2 Ezra 6 and 8. And I said unto him from Abraham and Isaac, and when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's Hand held first the heel of Esau. So that's what we're doing right now. You know, there was uh, two nations in that womb that were fighting, you know, um, you know, from the womb. And now it's the, it's the same thing. You know, the, the protagonist and the antagonist. You know, they got the protagonist, which is the uh, Hebrew Israelite, you know, and specifically the uh, the remnant, you know, the elect that are, are waking up uh, people on the highways and the byways that are that are know the true name, that are following the true doctrine. OK, and then you got um. You know, the antagonist, which is uh, Esau Edom, which is the wicked. Okay, and these are the two people in the story, um, you know, and, and um, you know, to bring in the next kingdom, you know, one has to fall. Esau Edom has to fall to bring in Yaharashai Hamashiach's kingdom and have, um, you know, everyone under subjection under his uh, footstool. And Lord willing, we're of those joy heirs. So meanwhile, with this word, we're pulling down uh, strongholds, you know, and, and imaginations, you know, all the... The pseudosciences that they put out there, all the lies and deception about who we are, calling us black, Latino, you know, uh, you know, Negroes, you know, um, Cuban, uh, Dominican, you know, um, you know, uh, Haitian, okay, Jamaican, all these different things. These are all bywords that were given to us by Esau Edom. You know, even Esau Edom doesn't go by his own name. He calls himself white. 
You know, when you look at that word white, it goes back to purity. And there's nothing pure about Esau Edom. He is profane and he is outside the temple. So with this word, we're again, we're pulling down, we're, I'll read it again, uh, you know, at the back end, it says, uh, when Jacob, uh, second Ezra 6 in the middle, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau, for Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. Yeah, so Jacob is the beginning of a, of a new era, you know, a new uh, cosmos, a new eon, right? To bring in forth um, Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, and for his name to be magnified, and for us, you know, the apple of his eye to be able to be, uh, Lord willing, we're joint heirs. Okay, so this is what the spirit of prophecy, all these things have to happen. You know, when, when they're speaking about Russia, you know, they're speaking about uh, Gog and Magog that are in the scriptures. Okay, so this is all prophecy and, and that's what we're in right now. Because uh, um, Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. So I'm going to play a little bit of this video and then I'm going to get into some scriptures, Lord willing. It'll be edifying. Putin in the past, why should the threat of new sanctions give him pause? Well, because he's never seen sanctions like the ones I promised will be imposed if he moves. It is going to be a disaster for Russia if they further invade Ukraine, and that our allies and partners are ready to impose severe cost and significant harm on Russia and the Russian economy. And, you know, we're going to fortify our NATO allies. I told him on the eastern flank, if in fact he does invade, we're going to, I've already shipped over $600 million worth of sophisticated equipment, defensive equipment to the Ukrainians. The cost of going into Ukraine in terms of physical loss of life. And so, you know, they have uh, invested over uh, $600 million over there, um, you know, as far as in Ukraine. And we know that Ukraine um, is also part of um, is also part of uh, allies with Russia. Okay, they have ties to uh, Russia too because they're right on the border. Okay, I'm gonna bring out the um, you see. So I wanna get, bring out a scripture real quick. It, speak, it says um, right here, so Mark 3 and 25, if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, it cannot stand, but it hath an end. This is Yahweh Shai HaMashiach speaking. No man can enter. Okay, so, you know, this is Mark 3 and 25. Let me read it again. And if a house be divided against itself, the house cannot stand. And if Satan rise up against itself... And be divided, he cannot stand, but it hath an end. Yes, yeah, so this is going to end their um, their rule of, um, you know, having dominion, having their portion in this time. Because, you know, you have uh, Babylon the Great, which is ran by the Edomites. Okay, then you have Russia, which is also ran by the Edomites. And they're in a beef. So they're, and it says right here, Yahweh Shai, um, you know, if Satan rise up against himself, and what is he doing? He's talking about sanctions, talking about taking away their, their monetary gain. Okay. So they are divided. He cannot stand, but hath an end. So, you know, we know that through prophecy, this this is going to be the end. This uh, World War Three is going to be the end of, um, you know, of these demons because it's going to be thermal uh, nuclear missiles that are going to be launched off from not just Russia and Babylon, but also um, China, um, you know, and then Armagamwan, you know, on the valley of Yahweh Bashem Hashem's judgment. OK, so all these things are going to happen. So when they're speaking about, you know, sanctions on money and things like that, and what are they doing? They're speaking very proudly. Um, and we know that Proverbs 16 and 18, pride go up before destruction and the haughty spirit before a fall. And that's what's happened. These guys are about to fall. Why? Because their pride has exceeded them, has exceeded them. Okay. The deceiver and deceiver are Yahweh Bashem and Ashais. Let me get this. Proverbs 16 and 4. The Lord out of when Yahweh had made all things for himself, yeah, even the wicked for the day of evil. Yeah, so he made these devils to be able to, for us to be able to see what wickedness truly is, to be able to also punish us, but not for a curse, but to be able to, um, you know, chastise us from, from the wickedness that we were doing. Okay. Let me get one more scripture. Proverbs 21 and 1. 
The king's heart is in the hand of Adawan Yahweh as the rivers of water he turneth whatsoever he will. Every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord Adawan Yahweh pondereth the hearts. Yeah, so he's <laughs> they think that they're doing the right thing in their own heart because they think that they're gonna bring about money, they their pride, as far as they think they're gonna win this war. But we know that Yahweh Shai is the one that's gonna be uh gloried in that. You know, because again, the king's hand is if is in um Yahweh Shimir Shai's, right? So we play this. The Russians, they'll, they'll be able to prevail over time, but it's going to be heavy. It's going to be real. It's going to be consequential. We're finding ourselves in a position where I believe you'll see that uh, there'll be severe economic consequences. For example, anything that involves dollar denominations, if they make a, if they invade, they're going to pay. They're not going, their banks will not be able to deal in dollars. Militarily, they have overwhelming superiority. And on the, on as, as it relates to Ukraine, but they'll pay a stiff price immediately, near term, medium term, and long term if they do it. I think he still does not want. See, these are all threats. Basically, saying you cross that line, we're gonna we're gonna hit you with that lead. We're gonna hit you with those missiles, okay? Cause see, Joe Butthead, he he so he he only starts talking like a tough guy when he he's got to say something negative. Cause that's actually who he is. You know, he's actually a wicked demon. So when he starts talking about war and when these devils start talking about war and doing something, you know, because that's actually who they are. They're actually very cardinal. So uh, Habakkuk 2 and 3, for the vision is yet for a point in time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Yeah, so th these things, you know, um, you know, the elders and apostles were speaking about these, you know, 10, 15 years ago or even uh, longer. Okay, about the the karagma that's gonna that's coming out, you know, um, Lord willing this year, okay, which is a graven image in your forehead or in your hand, you know, speaking about the the internment camps, these sea camps that they have set up, okay, and also speaking about them coming to form what the new world order, which is the Novus Order Sicorium, okay, and again speaking about uh, the third woe, okay, which is World War Three, um. You know, which is Lord, Lord willing going to be the end. And then, um, you know, this is one of the prophecies. OK, so this is yet for a point in time and know it delayed, you know, far as it seemed like it was a long time. Um, you know, a day to the Lord. Is a thousand years to us. OK, so, you know, it's only been a day. Right. So Habakkuk two and four. Be, behold, his soul, which is lifted up, is not upright in him, but the just shall live by its faith. Yes. Yeah, so we have to live. By faith in Yahweh Shem Hashem, we have to trust in the Lord, because we don't have basically we don't have no other chance anyway. You know, you you join Esau Edom, what is he gonna do? He's gonna feed you uh, death and destruction. He only can give you uh, that thing, okay? And then ultimately, he, then he can then he'll um, take it away because he's always uh, moving whatever kind of contract. Going back to um, Psalms fifty five and twenty, you know, he'll never hold his uh, contract. He'll always go back on his word. Which is the same thing this guy's done, you know. When, when um, you know, two thirds of our people were voting for uh, Joe Butthead, you know, thinking that he was a good guy, and they exposed who he was. But then people still want to give him a chance, you know. And that's our people are, have Stockholm syndrome from what Esau Edom has done—the rape, rob, and murder. Okay, when his soul is what not lifted up. Let me read it again. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. Okay, but the just shall live by his faith. Yeah, because he is that um, that vessel that was created for what um, destruction, right? Let me just get that real quick. Yeah, so right here it's, it reads. Um, Romans 9 and 22, what if our power Yahweh willing to show his wrath and to make his power known endured with much long suffering that the vessels of wrath fitted for destruction? And that's who Esau Edom is. OK, because it says right up here. Romans 9 and 13, as it is written, Jacob have I loved. And that goes back to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Jacob had 12 sons. His name, his name was later turned to Israel, sons of the power. OK. And those 12 sons were uh, promised the promise that it speaks about in uh, Romans, uh, I think that's 9 and 6. 
So it's in the same chapter. Yeah, so Romans 9 and 9. For this is the word of the promise. At this time I will come and Sarah shall have a son. Okay. Um... Yeah, so right here, this is the point. Uh, Romans 9 and 12, it was said unto her that the elder shall serve the younger. Okay, so when the who was first born, that was Esau. Again, we're pulling down his heel. Okay, so sure, uh, the elder shall sure serve the younger. And that's what's going to happen because that's why it speaks about Ecclesiastes 10 and 7, where it speaks about, I've seen, I seen uh, servants, um, servants upon horses and princes walking on the side. So, and they have that statue, you know, that they took down in, in New York. But it's still, you know, Ecclesiastes 10 and 7 is very, because um, that's what's going on. Because we're in captivity right now. And then it reads, Romans 9 and 13, it has written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Yeah, so he's hated uh, Esau, Edom. You know, that's why he hasn't been punished until right now. You know, his his um, wickedness, you know, and that, that vessel created for wrath and destruction is going to finally be, um, you know, expired. And they're going to be put under slavery. So let me read this again, Romans 9 and 22. What if our power Yahweh, willing to show his wrath and to make power known, endured which much long suffering that the vessels of wrath fitted for destruction? And that's what's going to happen. The, the, uh, the destruction, you know, as far as their missiles and their technology, Yahweh Shema Shai has formed them, you know, to be proud, you know, to be... Um, you know, to trust in their technology, to trust in their science. Instead, they should be trusting Yahabah Hashem Ashai. And that's what we need to do is come back to our Lord, Yahabah Hashem Ashai, and hearken to this word because this is uh, life or death. You know, you have, um, you know, you have life on the right hand side, which is Yahabah Shai Mashiach, immortality and salvation for the Hebrew Israelites. And then on the left side, which is the wicked, you have uh, Esau Edom offering you death. Okay. So going back to Habakkuk 2 and 5. Yet yeah, also because he transgressed by wine, he is a proud man. Yeah, so you know his um his pseudoscience, okay, his his lying wonders, um, you know, his um Christianity, his Catholicism, you know, saying that our Lord Esau Edom is a is a so called white man, okay, um, you know, lying about um, you know, how they treated our brothers uh, Gad and Ephraim, you know, lying about um, you know, calling us black and calling us, uh, you know, Puerto Rican and Dominican, all these different things, which are bywords, not calling us by our true name, you know, giving us a, a, a slave Bible to um, ultimately use this word. And, and, and it says, if you add to this word, you, well, you shall be destroyed. OK, um, and so that's what they've done. They've added and taken away from the scriptures, you know, and told lies and deception about they, that they're good people. Which, but we know in. You know, in this time that uh, the man of sin or the man of perdition is being revealed. And that's Esau Edom, which is the so-called white men of this world. The elites, the banksters. Habakkuk 2 and 5. Yeah, so because he transgressed by wine, he is a proud man. And you hear what this devil said. You know, we gave him, we're going to have a hard, stiff, you know, um, you know, uh, sanctions on him. And, and this and that. We sent $600 million over to Ukraine. So, you know, they're talking that, um, that rich, you know, like they, they got it, you know, they like, you know, we got this in the bag. We just pay them off again. Okay. So, <laughs> you know, um, uh, so he is a proud man and we read about when you have, when you're pride, right. Uh, Proverbs uh, 16 and, uh, 18. And then we also read in uh, what Proverbs 21 that Yahabah Shemar Shai is, um, controlling the king. And this is one of the Kings, um, you know, of, uh, Esau, of, uh, of Babylon, right? Which is the cash cow for Esau Edom. So Habakkuk two and five in the middle, neither keepeth at home. He enlarges his desire as hell. Yeah. So he's going over to Ukraine to tell, um, you know, these people how to run their life. Okay. Why? Because he wants to be able to have his missiles and his uh, military system right next to Russia, because he knows Russia is, is, um, you know, one of those superpowers that, that they're going to have to fight one of these days. Okay, going back to um, you know, going back to the Cold War, going back to World War II. Okay, that bear is what being um woken up. Okay, that it speaks about in uh, Revelation thirteen and two. You know, in uh, you know, um, Daniel seven and five. Okay, so this is Habakkuk two and five. Yeah, also because he transgressed by wine, he is a proud man. Neither keep it at home. Yeah, he's conquered. Like I said earlier, he's in over seven. He has uh, seven hundred and fifty embassies, which are military bases. 
and uh, over 80 countries in everybody's business. Neither keep it at home. He enlarges his desire as hell. Yeah, so his condition um, to put you in hell is a condition um, to have everyone, what, uh, linked up to um, their um, techocracy to be able to have control over you. And if you don't comply, they will shut you off, okay? And as death, yeah, and Esau Edom is known as death, but we know Yahweh Shai has the victory over death. That's in 1 Corinthians 15 and about 54. And cannot be satisfied, but gather unto him all nations and heap unto him all people. Yep. And so this devil has a lot to pay for. Okay. Let me get this. Habakkuk 2 and 6. Shall not all these take up a parable against him and taunting proverb against him and say, Woe unto them that increasingly that which is not his yeah so this is the prophets that are waking up on the highways and the byways through the power of yahweh shai hamashiach being that perfect lamb and prophesying against this evil wicked queendom okay to expose who he is right which is the wicked and to you know chant down this kingdom to bring in um yahweh shai hamashiach's kingdom and lord willing we're joint heirs and lord willing we're able to save uh be saved in the um you know the, the second lake of fire it says Habakkuk 2 and 6 at the bottom, and to him that laddeth himself with thick clay. Yeah, so when you go into that word thick clay, it goes into debt. You know, and um, these, um, you know, Esau Edom has made a, a heavy, heavy debt, you know, over $30 uh, trillion, you know, um, you know, of them just doing whatever they want, going to these military bases, taking over other people's land and doing all this stuff and just spending at an all-time high. And ultimately, this is going to come back on their head because they're not going to have the certain resources that they once had, okay? Because they're not backed by gold or silver. And, and these other heathen nations are not trusting them. And also Esau, Edom, uh, you know, is there any more wisdom in Teman? And Esau, Edom is being what may bear, okay? By him being exposed by uh, the prophets and by Yahabba Shemashai putting the spirit on these other heathen nations to say that they are strong, right? Any football lore? Number one. Number two, do I think he'll test the West, test the United States and NATO as, as uh, significantly as he can? Yes, I think he will. But I think he'll pay a serious and dear price for it that he doesn't think now will cost him what it's going to cost him. And I think he'll regret having done it. The two things he said to me that he wants guarantees on one is Ukraine will never be part of NATO, and two that NATO or the there will not be strategic weapons stationed in Ukraine. Well, we can work out something on the second piece, pretending what he does along the Russian line as well, or the Russian border in the European area of Russia. On the first piece, we have a number of treaties internationally and in Europe that suggest that you get to choose who you want to be with. But the likelihood that Ukraine is going to join NATO in the near term is not very likely based on. OK, so basically he's uh, you know threatening them. So when you go into the uh, scriptures, it speaks about uh, Ezekiel. Let me start from. Um, let me just start from uh, Ezekiel 38 and 4. I'll get to the point. It says uh, this is in the NLT. I will turn around and put hooks in their jaws to lead you out with the whole army, your horses and chariots in full armor, and the great herd armed with shields and swords. Right? It says, uh, Persia and Ethiopia and Libya will join you too with all their weapons. Okay, so all these, um, you know, these nations that are aligned with Russia, they're going to what? Join all the war. Okay? Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya. And when you look at it, see, you got the map. Yeah, this is the map right here. So you have a uh, Turk. Let me let me actually get. Um, let me start from Ezekiel thirty-eight and two. Son of man, turn and face Gog to the land of of Magog and the princes who rule over the nations, Meshach and, and Tubal. Okay, so Meshach goes back to the uh, Armenians. Okay, and then um, Salakia. Uh, yeah, Meshach goes back to Turkey, and um, you know Tubal goes back to Armenia. Or I think it's actually vice versa. Yeah. So Armenia, basically Armenia and Turkey and prophesy against him. That's why we prophesy against him. Why? Because they're Edomites. Give him this message for sovereign, O Lord Yahweh Shai, God 
am your enemy and Gog in the land of Magog are as Russia. I would turn around and put your hooks in your jaws to lead you out to the whole army and horses and chariots and full armor and a great herd armed with shields and swords. Right. And so that's what they're doing right now. You see the um, that they're putting over 30,000 tanks and certain, uh, you know, uh, military forces and, and bringing them on trains over there to be at the Ukraine border. OK, yeah, to bring them at the, the, at the Ukraine border to be able to fight. OK, so in the next couple of weeks, things are going to start to heat up because they're going to have all the military forces. Then you saw that, um, you know, Babylon, the great uh, Biden said that they sent over six hundred million dollars over there. OK, so and then also you saw the guy blinking, which is one of the uh, military guys, you know, for for um, that's at the White House. He done went over there for a meeting. OK, so and he never leaves the office. So this is uh, getting serious, you know. And so when they're bringing all their, their military forces uh, over there, you know, it's going to be what the third world. OK, so let's get that. The beginning of it. So Revelation 11 and four, the second one was passed. Yeah, World War Two. OK, and World War Two. I mean, I think I got it set up Let's see. uh Yeah, World War II ended in, uh, yeah, so this says uh, the eastern front of the World War II was a theater of conflict between European Axis powers against the Soviet Union. So UUS, USSR, okay, Poland and other allies, which encompassed Central Europe, Eastern Europe, Northeast Europe, okay. Um, so, you know, this ended in uh, it was 1941 to 1945, okay. And shortly after that, uh, NATO was formed. OK, it, um, some say, you know, it's, it says 1949, but I think it started about 1947. OK, and this says um, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization was created in 1949 by the United States, Canada and several Western European nations to provide collective security against the Soviet Union. That's Russia. OK, NATO was the first uh, peace peacetime military alliance that United States entered into the outside Western Hemisphere. OK, and so. You know, that's why um, this beast, this whore, has joined unto these other uh, heathen nations. Okay, the, uh, joined unto these, um, you know, NATO and EU. Okay, which is which speaks about, you know, the uh, the ten horns being formed. Okay, of uh, NATO and EU. And so they're going to go up against uh, Russia and, and um, yeah, they're going to go up, Slakia, they're going to go up against Russia, which is against that, that bear. Okay. Speaks about, let's see, let's get that. I'll just get it on here. Let's see, Russia, I think that's 11, I don't know, 13, 13, and 2. Yeah, 13 and 2. And it reads, And the beast, and the beast which I saw was like a leopard, and that's speaking about uh, Alexander the Great, right? The Greeks. And his feet were as feet of a bear, okay? And his mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and a great authority. Okay? So this is going to be, um, you know, the it started with the Greeks, and then it's going to end with that, with that bear. Okay, that bear what uh, striking them down, right? And so this is showing you know the beginning and the end, and from this war that's going to create um, a lot more things to uh, that's going to bring in the kingdom. Okay, so let's get this. It's Matthew's, and these it says what it's going to be at the end. Matthew's twenty four and six. Yeah, Matthew 24 and 6, and, and this is your Harashai speaking, and you shall hear wars and rumors of wars. See that you not be troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. And when you go into that word sorrows, it goes into what? Sadness. Okay, there's going to be a lot of sadness, um, you know, before we enter the kingdom. But we know Yahabashim Harashai is, um, you know, hardening our hearts right now. 
for us to be able to get that victory, those that endure for the name. That's why we got to watch as well as pray. That's, um, I think, the same chapter, 24, 33. Matthew 24 and 33. So likewise, you shall, uh, this is Yaharashai speaking, Matthew 24 and 33. So likewise, when you shall see all these things, know that it is near even as the doors. Verily I say unto you, this is a generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. And what's being fulfilled? Um, World War Three that we read in uh, Revelation 11 and 14. Okay. And right now, these, um, these, uh, you know, Russia is being stirred up. The Medes are being stirred up right now. So Revelation 11 and 14, the second woe is past and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. Yes. Yeah, so this third woe is coming, coming very quickly, you know, because we know that the time for us, it seems like a long time, but to Yahweh Yah Shemar Hashai, the, um, it's only been a day or not even a day. Okay. Let me get this. This is Revelation 13. In 17, it reads, Isaiah 13 and 17, and that no man might buy, Slakia, Isaiah, <laughs> Slakia, Isaiah 13 and 17. Yeah, Isaiah 13 and 17, behold, I will stir up the Medes, right? When you go into uh, that word Medes, it goes into, um, you know, the, the Russians, okay? Stir up the Medes against them, which shall not regard silver as for gold. They shall not delight in it, okay? So they're not going to be worried about anything. They're worried about just, you know, just, uh, you know, destruction. Their bows also shall dash the young men to pieces, and they shall have no pity on the fruit of their womb. Their eyes shall not spare children. Yeah, so they're not going to be worried about men, women, and children. You know, everybody's got to get it. Okay, anybody that's in the way, when those missiles fire off, those, um, you know, those uh, different um, weapons that they have, different technology, those super soldiers that they have, they're not going to be worried about anybody, um, you know, out there. Okay, this is war. Isaiah 13 and 19. And Babylon and glory of the kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldeans, excellently shall be as when Yahweh overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. And what happened in Sodom and Gomorrah? It was destroyed with fire. So that's going to be the same thing that's going to happen. This intercontinental ballistic uh, missiles are going to be hitting this place. Right? You know, so I want to get uh, one more, a couple more scriptures and I'll end it. Amos 3, 3 and 6. Shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in the city and the Lord I don't want Yahweh hadn't done it? So Yahweh Shem Rashi is the one that's uh, doing all this. You know, people say, well, is, our God's only good. You know, he does everything, you know. Okay, yeah, he's doing it for, because he is Yahweh Shem Rashi. Okay, that is the order. That is the decree. So he's doing this all for a reason. That's why these heathen nations got to get punished. Why? Because they touched the apple of his eye. And they are wicked and then profane are outside the temple. Everything they do is abomination, right? Amos 3 and 7, Surely the Lord Yahweh Shem Rashi, our power, will do nothing, but he revealed his secret unto the servants, the prophets. Yeah, so the prophets are the ones that are um, out there, you know, giving warning to the Hebrew Israelites, warning them of this death and destruction, right? Speaks about that in Jeremiah 28 and 8. Yeah, it says, The prophets that have been before me and before the old prophesied both against many countries, against great kingdoms of war and evil and pestilence. Yeah, so... All these things have been done before, okay? And but except for this time, you know, the victory is giving. This is 1 Corinthians 15, and I'll end it right here. 57. Let's see, this start at 54. First Corinthians 15 and 57. But thanks be to our power, Yahweh, which give us the victory through our Lord, Yahweh Shai HaMashiach. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, for so much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, Yahweh Bashem HaShai. So yeah, whatever that you're doing, he's not what not unrighteous to forget your works, not 
um, you know, to um, not forget what you have done for Yahab Hashem Yahashai, you know, what you have made your calling election sure. Okay, so it says right here, this is Proverbs 3, and I'll end it right here. Proverbs 3 and 5, trust in the Lord Adawan Yahawah with all thine heart and lean not on thy own understanding. Yes, yeah, so don't trust in your weapons. You know, don't trust in your woman. Don't trust in your job. You know, trust in Yahweh Hashem Yahashai. And all that ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes and fear Adawan Yahawah and depart from evil. Yes, yeah, so depart from this world. You know, it says um, 1 John 2 and 15 where it says love not the world or the things in it. You know, in Romans 12 and 2 where it says be renewed in your mind. Why? Because this world is wicked. And and we read in 1 Corinthians 15 and 57 that Yahweh Shai HaMashach what has, given the, has been given the victory. Okay, what? Over death. Okay? Because that's all Esau Edom can give you. So with that, Kahala Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, Barakatai Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Kakadash, Shalom to Alek. Kwame Yahshala.